Before you learn how to create a database, which is the next training video, I think it's important we go over just a little bit more in depth the four main objects that make up most databases. For example, I'm going to double click on my exercise folder here, open it up, and I'm going to open up my books database. In my books database, I've got three tables, one for the book inventory list of all our books, another one for the customers that we're keeping track of who purchased our books. So I'm going to go ahead and double click and open up the database. Over to the left hand side I have the navigation pane which lists all my access objects. If it doesn't show all of them, then make sure you click on the drop down arrow and choose all. Okay. I'm going to click off in a blank area. Now at the foundation of any database is data. If you don't have data or records, you don't have a database. The foundation of Microsoft Access 2007 are tables. Tables is what you store your data in, or your records. For example, I have records for books, our customers, and the orders that have been made so far. If I double click on the books table, it opens it up and it shows a listing of all the books that we sell. If I double click and open up customers, it shows a list of all our customers. If I double click and open up orders, it shows a list of all the orders we made so far to our customers. It has the order number has the customer number, has the date that we made the sale, the quantity, 500 books, the book number, and also the sales rep who made the sale. So you can see that after I open up each table, it's a tab here, so I can click on the other tabs because the tables are still open until I actually close them. If I want to close them, I can, when in doubt, right click on the tab and left click on close. Right click and left click on close or close all. So you've got all this data, all these books, millions of books, millions of records on customers and orders. How do you filter through all that? For example, let's say I want to be able to pull up all the customers who make more than a million dollars a year or who live in the state of California because maybe I want to target my marketing or maybe I need to produce records of how much we made so far this year so we can pay our quarterly taxes. I mean, that could be a mess, right? The purpose behind queries is to do just that, is to filter through these tables and say, I want to find all the customers who make more than a million dollars a year. You don't want to pull up all your customers because that doesn't make sense. In the customers table, I don't need to pull up the customer number. I just need to pull up their name. And if I had additional fields that had the amount of money they were making each year, just pull that up as well. That's the purpose of the query. So for example, when I close out of this table, I have the books table. It has three fields, book number, title, and book price. The books query, when I double click on that, only has two. I changed it, so I said, look, I just want to find out the book number and the book title. If I go back to the table, I don't need the book price. I don't need to look at the price to do the inventory. So you can see, I can filter out some of the extra information or fields here without coming to the books and going, I don't need to see this. Let me just go ahead and delete that. You don't want to delete records. You want to be able to filter through them. And that's what these queries do. And I'll show you how to create queries, okay? So the purpose of a query is to extract information, not all the information that's there. I'm going to go ahead and right click and close all here. Next are forms. Forms are just basically tables with a facelift. In other words, when you open up a table, you can go ahead and add records in here. In fact, if you look at the bottom of the table, you see at the bottom you have your navigation bar where you can go ahead and go to the next record by clicking on that little arrow and it takes me to the next record. I go to the second, three of ten, four of ten. It gives me the total down here of how many records I have. If I wanted to, I can click in here, delete the number four, and type in six and hit enter and it automatically takes me to record six. So you can navigate around a little bit here. So I'm zipping from record to record, one row at a time, okay? But if I go ahead and open up the books form, think of a form when you're purchasing a product on the web. You're entering in all your information. However, this form, whoever created the form said, look, I don't want the book number to be the first one in line, or I don't want the title to be the first field that you fill out, or the book price, you know, you can mix them up. That's the whole purpose of the form, is just mixing the fields around so you can actually control where the user is focused on first. You want them to focus on entering in the first field, the title of the book, the book number, the book price. Let's take a look at the books form here. Double click on that. Okay, so the first thing you want you to focus on is the book number. You see that? Fields here from the table. It's just that it looks different in the form because it's basically a facelift. In other words, any changes we make in this form is linked and it's going to actually update in the books table. That also goes with queries. If you make any changes in queries, it'll actually update the tables as well. The whole purpose of the form is to be able to move fields around to say, look, I don't want book number here in the upper left hand corner. I don't want the field to be this long here. I want it to be the box like half the size here. I also want the book title to be in the upper right hand corner in the lower right or the lower left. You can move these around, okay? And this could be for the front office. Maybe if you're getting a new shipment of books, you're going to tell the front office person, look, anytime you get new shipment of books in, I want you to go ahead 
and enter in a new record here without going to the books table and entering in the new record down below you want to come to the books form and be able to enter in a new record here well how do you enter in a new record well down at the bottom they have the navigation bar just like they do in the tables where you can click and go to the next record click 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 and you see how it takes me through each book here well if I come down at the bottom here and I click on new blank record it clears this out I can just go ahead and type in the new book number the new book title that we receive that we're going to be selling and the book price so like I said you can enter in your records in the form or in a table but a form looks a little bit cleaner you can make it look nice you can make it look easier you can also lay out the fields and what order you want to put them in in addition in a form you can actually create subforms or links to other tables up at the top here I got three fields that are for my books table down below I have my orders table here so for example you can look at the, this book Christmas ideas we have an order for that already we had its order number four we had a customer that purchased it on this date and they purchased a hundred well if a customer calls up and says look I want to purchase your um, HD 100 your Christmas ideas come down in here click in this new record here type in the number the date the quantity and it'll keep track of all those orders for each book so you can get a little bit more fancier with these forms otherwise I'd have to open up the books table I'd have to open up the orders table that just gets too messy why not just dump it all in one form where I can actually add a new order add new books update the books be able to make changes to the books things like that I'm gonna go ahead and right click and close out of the books form okay so I'm just back to the books table then we have reports basically there's a report you want to print out and give it to somebody like okay I'm gonna print a report of how many books we have on file I mean you could come to the table and print off the table here but that doesn't look as clean as this report for example that's been created I'm gonna double click on the books report hey that report looks pretty nice doesn't it it's got the book number here it's got the title you can color the report color the text give it blocks you can put in images you know just make the report look really nice like you would in a presentation either for school or for your boss at your business and it gives us the total dollar amount here for um, all the different book prices that we have on file I mean compare that to looking at your table again forms are giving it the table of facelift for people who want to enter in data and control how they enter in the data reports here is a facelift for your tables to make it a nice presentation like a PowerPoint presentation only except it's printable you can print this off and hand it to your bosses or at a board meeting and so on so again all these objects are linked to the table you don't have any data in the table you're not going to have any data in a query from querying the table you're not going to have any forms I mean you can create a form but if it's not linked to any data there's going to be nothing showing up in the form and also with reports so if I go to the table with the books and I delete all the data in there and I try to generate this report well I could generate it but it would just show all this all these books here gone deleted and that's the purpose of a database is to be able to not only enter in data but to control the data to pick out elements of the data or to pick out specific records or to be able to enter in data in a way that's more uniform for all the front-end users who are entering in or taking orders over the phone and for the reports to be able to hand those off to other people who you don't want to ship your whole database to but just pick out certain elements of the database let me go ahead and close out of all these tabs here one final thing I want to cover is what's with these names here I have a books table I have a customers table why do I have a three letter prefix well some creators of databases uses prefix to help identify later in other parts of access that they're working on a table for example I have books I have books I have books which ones the form which ones the query which ones the table well here it's obvious you can see that you can see that they're uh, grouped under tables grouped under queries grouped under forms but when you're in designing your forms or designing your reports which I'll show you how to do it's fairly simple for example I'm gonna go ahead and double click and open up the form here you're seeing the front end view but let's go to the design view I'm gonna right click on the tab and go to the design view here's how we set up the form here's is where we can move our fields around and, and maybe shrink up our text boxes here okay but what I'm gonna do is I'm pulling this data right here from the book table this data is being pulled from the table orders right so let me go ahead and click on the property sheet and bring it up and I don't want to confuse you here but I want to make a point okay in the property sheet you see where it says TBL books and I click on the drop down arrow and I say in this report I want the information pulling from the table books or I want it to be able to pull it from the query books if I don't have that three letters before books query or the three letters defining that the books here's the table I don't know which ones which it would just be books and books see how confusing that can be that's why on the back end when you start getting fancy and you're designing your forms and pulling in information from other tables here you want to be able to create the names books 
but say TBL, it's a book. But adding the prefix TBL, like if I had order details, I'd type in TBL order details. If I created a table for products, I'd type in TBL products. So that way in the back end, I click the drop down arrow. I know my TBLs are tables and my QRYs are queries and my FRMs are forms and so forth, okay? I'm going to go ahead and close out of here and close out of my design view. And I'm going to take you step by step so you can actually grow in and learn how to set up your own database, including our, all our objects. We'll go from tables, we'll go to queries, then we'll go to forms, and then finally reports. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.